What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will and I'm down here in sunny Key West. It's a beautiful, beautiful day out today. Just got a phone call from Aaron asking me if I could come drive the boat. He's going to do uh, one last Hail Mary mission for Wahoo before they leave the area and they're not as thick of it as they've been. Now, I've gotten a few questions as to why I always drive the boat and I don't dive. I can give you a short answer and a long answer. The short answer is I do dive. Um, I do shoot fish. I It doesn't come naturally to me, so somehow I mess the camera up every time. I get uh, the repetition mixed up and I usually hit stop recording, shoot a fish, hit start recording. Um, I don't have luck in that department. The long answer is that about six years ago, I only just learned how to swim. Uh, I came down to Key West and I was determined. So I learned how to swim, started fishing with Aaron, and I knew that he was into diving. So I started diving with Aaron and he was very patient with me. He had no reason to be, but uh, he kept bringing me out and he'd teach me little things here and there. So it is something that does not come naturally to me. Now on top of it, trying to keep up with Aaron, and this is very important for new divers and everyone else, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Um, I didn't even know to know that I was doing something wrong. So one of the things that I was not keeping up with was my equalization. And what I ended up doing trying to keep up with Aaron and all those guys was doing a lot of damage to my sinus and my ear. Um, damage that resulted in two major surgeries. Uh, and it's just never been the same. So at this point in my life, I've accepted I am a 30 to 40 foot diver tops. And that is it. And that is on the perfect day when I'm having no sinus trouble and it's just nice out and everything comes together. That's where I'm at. And it's okay. I'm happy to just be on the water. With that said, I am just happy to be on the water and to drive the boat for Aaron and those guys while they dive and get the wahoo. I still get to cook with it, so it's okay. So let's head on down to the boat. This working man. All right, we are off. We got Justin. <laughs> Say hi, Justin. I'm Aaron. And Aaron. <laughs> and Aaron, I just want to point out, Aaron's going wahoo fishing. It's hot out. He's in a wetsuit. He got soup. Who gets soup? <laughs> anyway. The soup's good, man. We're, he <laughs> we're, we're heading out. We'll see you on the water. I have part of These guys are gearing up, jump in the water. They're going for Wahoo. I have a uh, light tackle rod and reel. Just gonna do some fun fishing. <laughs> you got you got something to say about that? No, actually don't. <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. Wait, actually, just go over for the people that don't know, quick Wahoo regulations. They are there's no size limit. They are two per person. Um and there's no season. They do not close here. So there you go. So hopefully these guys... See, Aaron doesn't want me in the water because he's afraid I'll shoot them all. So that's why he always asks me to drive. He's <laughs> on to me. <laughs> but yeah, these guys are going to jump in. We'll get them situated and then just do some fishing. So Aaron just said there's life all over the place. Um, plenty of sharks, so if you hook up, it's quick. Okay. <laughs> all right, so he said something that's actually really important right there. Uh, he just said there's plenty of sharks. Um, one of the things that I don't want to do while sitting here fishing myself is rile up the sharks so then if they shoot a wahoo, they're going to have the sharks all fired up. So that's one thing. Another thing is that I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing here because really I'm trying to keep my eye on the two of them over there. Um, and third, I kind of am just having fun. I don't want to hook anything really too big because... I'm close to them, if it runs and it takes line, wraps around them, or they shoot a fish and something gets on, we don't really want that either. So that's why I said I'm just doing a little bit of 
light tackle fun fishing. That's it. Let's see if we come up with anything. So coming up on like this little bank here, and there's usually a bunch of jacks, yellowtail, a couple of mackerel. We'll see. Nobody's interested yet, but nothing. But from the looks of it, we're going over a very large ball of life right now. Let's see if we can get something up. And keeping my eye on those guys. Nobody's dove yet. Nobody's throwing a flasher. So I'm not too concerned yet. I reset the boys. Aaron said he saw a pocket of mackerel, a pocket of bonita. They've seen rainbow runners. Nothing is interested in my jig. I have a feeling I have a little bit of wire trace on um, because of the mackerel. Uh, there's also uh, king mackerel here. Last time I was here, I got one decent size. Somehow got it with just mono. But the wires really throws them off sometimes, and the water is super clear. They said there's about 100 feet visibility, 80 feet visibility. But um, so I don't think I'm going to come up with much. So I'm really dependent on these guys shooting a Wahoo. But while I'm here, we'll keep fishing. Just went over a huge ball of life, but unfortunately I was drifting into the boys' toes, toe line, so I had to get off of it. Once they drift a little bit past that, I'm gonna go back to that and see if I can dredge something up. Um, just in case anyone asks or anything, this is a rod from Toadfish they sent out to me in the reel, giving it a shot. Um, I like their message. I don't try to sell anything on my channel or anything like that. Uh, I just like their message because their rods are made from recycled beach plastic, which is a really cool concept. And then for every rod that you buy, they plant oysters in uh, North Carolina as filter feeders to clean the water. So it's a good mission statement, and the rod ain't bad either. I'll put a link down below if you want to check them out and just see what they're all about. It's a cool company. If you hear that little brrr, it's because I tied my knot, my braid to my mono. I tied the knot a little little too high. So I'm actually reeling it through the through the guides like a kook. But too too lazy to change it. Alright, boys are back and they got one. Let's see. It's a monster. <laughs> There you go. I did. I heard you yell. It's coming back. Yeah, there was a bunch of. That was literally the biggest one in the school. It was funny because Justin goes, "Man, all the life was at the beginning of the drift." Can we go reset, and then I'm not kidding. Thirty seconds, they all swam by. <laughs> See, I told you. Even driving the boat, I still, you know, I get some of the excitement, and I get a little bit of wahoo, right? We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Maybe the <laughs> I'll do something good with them. <laughs> I have no doubt. All right, Aaron's going for one more drift, and then we're heading in. That was a really quick mission. Got his wahoo. How happy are you? Stoked. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he said the other day we were driving home, and he goes, "I want one more wahoo," and here we are. Here we are with one more wahoo, but. He's going for one more This is just water. a swim. This, I'm just going for a swim. Okay. Let's be honest. All right, just a swim. Just a swim. If one swims by, you know. <laughs> I'm going to keep jigging. Where we'll is see. Trafalgar? I don't know. I really want a rainbow runner, and then we could do some side-by-side -side sashimi. Ooh, if I see one, I'll do one. All right. There we, see, I just got to put in the request, and it comes up. Yeah, you got to get, get your orders in. Yeah, yeah. All right. So hopefully a rainbow runner is coming up. A rainbow rummer. Rainbow rummer. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Hope, I hope you're right. Don't come back without a rainbow rummer. <laughs> Hold on, you're... There you go. And he's off. If he doesn't have a rainbow runner in his hands, I'll just drive away and leave him out here. Alright, iron shot again. I've been dropping my jig down. He keeps saying, actually, 
had a small wahoo. He was like, there's a wahoo chasing your jig. Kept jigging it, kept jigging it. He was watching it and he said it just kept swimming by, swimming by. Never took like a real interest. That would have been super cool to uh, pull up a small wahoo on my rod, but didn't happen. But I'm interested to see what he just got because he shot something. What? I'm not filming you, I'm filming me. <laughs> we'll see what he got. Okay, so I lied. I did one more drift. I couldn't help myself. <sighs> now they're still located. I didn't have my camera on. Just wanted to float around. But now we're actually done. Well, no, when I, I pulled up, pulled my head out to talk to you guys, I looked down and he was literally straight under me at 30 feet heading into the turn. There was no getting him to turn around. Yeah, he did. Love it. Love it. Look at this rainbow runner I got for you, Will. Thank you. <laughs> That's a funny looking rainbow runner. I'll take it though. It's, it's weird. When they get big, they get kind of blue. <laughs> Tastes more like Wahoo. <laughs> like a butterfly. <laughs> so, I don't even need to tell you because he's already done it. Brain, bleed, and gutted. Aaron goes into extra strap and guts him. And then when he throws it into the ice well, he's going to pack the stomach full of ice. So that's going to cool down a lot. And we won't see that fish until tomorrow. We're going to give him an entire day to completely cool down before we do anything with it. So next time you see it, it'll be nice and chilled and we'll cut them up. Or it's just a giant piece of seaweed because it's not fighting at all. Oh no, no, it's fighting. All right, so on the way back in, decided to just throw the, what is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> throw the lorry, we were going slow while these guys were packing up and changing. Where? It's got to be, it's tiny, whatever it is. Rainbow Runner. Is it? Pocket Bonita. Calamari. <laughs> Pocket Bonita, baby. Oh, that's an eater, for All right. sure. Alright. <laughs> At least I put something on the rod, you know? You feel like a winner? I do. I feel great now. Show us that thing. Look at that. Be proud of that, man. <laughs> That thing was so hungry, it ate a lure as big as it, it is. Listen, there were, there were a couple of tops. There is a couple. We're gonna keep, we're gonna keep trolling. <laughs> All right, so it's the next day. The fish are completely cooled down, chilled down ice down <laughs> and uh aaron's cutting off some of the loins there for me now something that i want to address we left that fish in the ice box overnight you could actually leave that fish for like five days in the ice box the number one enemy to your fish fillet is air and that's why a lot of people vacuum seal their fish but you start taking care of your fish the minute that it's caught so aaron brained bled and they were gutted and iced down immediately. They could have stayed in the ice box, like I said, four or five days, and then when we took the fillets off, they could stay in your fridge for four or five days. So I'm gonna test this theory, and what we're gonna do is wrap these in paper towel, get them sushi ready, and this is actually a callback to when we were in Belize and Aaron was with the sushi chef, he said he never uses day of fish. He always lets it sit for at least three days minimum for the fish to completely relax and it actually brings out a lot of flavor. If you ever notice, an ice cold new fish almost has no flavor. So we're gonna let this sit four or five days and then we're gonna make carpaccio out of it. Just seems like what you got there. Got all kinds of onlookers. What do you want, tuna? 
Tiếp nhỉ Em xong ghét rồi Like the rocks are lava Old Equal Opportunity Pearl showed up Oh <laughs> Like am I late? Pearl Pearl So now that all the bloodline is cut out and everything cleaned up, we're going to wrap it in a paper towel. I'm not going to um, vacuum seal it. I'm just going to put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the foot, uh, fridge. A lot of sushi chefs actually leave it out to air dry. That's the new rage right now is uh, dry aging. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're just taking care of it to prove how much life you can get out of your fish. And one of the other things that I'll mention is in a day, I'll swap out these paper towels. But that's it. You're going into a plastic bag, into the fridge, and we'll see you in about four days. Welcome to the kitchen, and it has been almost seven days. So much so to the point of, and I'm not even kidding, I got a cold and got over that cold in the time that this Wahoo's been sitting in the fridge resting. Now I'm going to grab that and we're going to take a look at it. Now in that time, I actually wasn't here, but Aaron was nice enough to swap out the paper towels one time for me. And those aren't moist at all, which is a good sign. So the bloodline got a little bit oxidized. That's okay. We're going to cut that off anyway, but there's absolutely no fishy smell to that whatsoever. And what's funny is that this piece of fish is probably still a couple days younger than the one you would see at the market. Cause at the market, it sits on the boat, it goes to a warehouse, it gets shipped out. That fish then sits in somebody's other warehouse. Then it gets cut, then it gets put in the case. So even still, this fish is still more fresh than that. It's perfect. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a carpaccio. Carpaccio is a lot like a crudo. The only difference is that a carpaccio is cut super, super thin. And with that carpaccio, I'm gonna make comfy garlic. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of serrano pepper and some rosemary. So right now, let's get on the comfy garlic. So on very, very low heat, this is going to steep for about 30 minutes and then we'll pull it off.
<laughs> what? <laughs> just the silence and you staring at it. I'm just thinking. There. There's a lot going on there. There's not though. But did you look at it? I look. <laughs> All right. So what are the instructions? Just get in there. Get in there? Yeah. So what is this stuff? Uh, that's uh, comfy garlic with comfy. lemon. So that's going to be really powerful. I'd only cut comfy? like a little bit. Comfy garlic? Comfy garlic. <laughs> I'm going without comfy garlic first. And the oil I cooked the garlic on is on the crudo as well. It's all olive oil. But with right. garlic. I can taste and it. And rosemary. Whoa. <laughs> you can taste it after, like the after. The afterburn? The after pop. Try this stuff. The comfy garlic. It's kind of confusing. It's got lemon in it. That's what it is. Yeah, it's got lemon. Garlic and lemon. Yep. Is it less confusing now? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's taste bud confusing. <laughs> But more so, how's the Wahoo being a week old? The Wahoo's spectacular. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, this is kind of throwing me off a little. Is it? Yeah. It's Why? not a it's not a bad flavor, I just don't feel like it goes with fish. Hmm. I'm being honest here. Don't, yeah. don't get mad at me. No, I'm not mad at all. I <laughs> there's something like it there's so, it tastes like more than garlic and lemon. It's it's cause it well, there's rosemary. That's not what I'm tasting though. There's something's <laughs> Something's off here. <laughs> Not like in a bad way, just I confused way. The Wahoo's spectacular. So if you told me that was week old, I would tell you you're a liar. Yeah. So the reason why I'm I'm gonna be totally honest. The reason why I think that this tastes a little not off, but maybe would go better on something like chicken or something like that. I took it a little bit further than I wanted to, so and the garlic got a little. That... It got a little bitter. Oh, maybe that's what it is because it's the lemon's not helping that. So it's lemon's a... bitter. Yeah, so it's a little bit bitter, but the the pieces not with the garlic confit. They're incredible. I think the garlic confit, if you put it on toast, would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. That that is my least favorite part. This is spectacular. With just the Serrano and the, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> as I put it on the dish, I had the thought too. The Wahoo's too delicate of a fish for it. Yeah, it's almost, uh, that's kind of the word I was thinking was aggressive. Yeah. It's, it's an aggressive flavor for such a mild. Where the oil has all those flavors in it and the oil's way more. Smooth. Yeah. Yeah, this, so this is an aggressive sauce. It's not bad. Excuse me. It's just not my favorite on the Wahoo. I agree. I would leave it off. That's angry with it. <laughs> it's it like just no Wahoo. It just needed the oil, but I was worried that the oil didn't have enough garlic flavor, but yeah. it absolutely does. No, it does. It definitely does. Yeah. Yeah. That I would leave off the dish. Now, if I left that off the dish, yeah. how good. See, that's, that's what's great. so funny about cooking. If you add the wrong thing, it can break a dish to where it's just not as good. At least good. you didn't smother it in it though. No, and I did that on purpose because <laughs> I, was, I wasn't I was sure about it, but it was a test. That, so That little, was the sour orange? Sour orange. That's a nice little, nice little touch there. Yeah, I think if I left it a more delicate, subtle dish, it would have been nicer, if that makes sense. If you put that on, it's not bad. It's just not right for, in my opinion. No, no, no. You're not. Opinion. No, I like it's that. It's not right for the fish. You're not wrong. I could eat Wahoo all day like this. Well, we have more of it in there, so I can leave that off <laughs> and I have more. <laughs> Here we go. But, yeah. So, I mean, that's the fun of cooking is that it's learning. I've never made Absolutely. anything like this before. Um... I wish the Serranos were a little bit hotter, but that's not my fault. I wish they had a little more heat to them. But yeah, if you that dish... Them in the store? I just take a little. <laughs> that dish, if I left the comfy garlic off, 
would have been absolutely spectacular. Putting that on, it overpowered it, and it was a little, it's just a little too much. I agree. It looked pretty. No, it looked great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to eat the rest of this. Well, not the rest. We're going to eat the middle of that and leave the other stuff on the side. But if you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.